The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. Now, today's action was pretty wild when we look at it. So we come down to our key level around 18.95, 19K. We bounce back into 19.4 and reject. Again, the key levels are dictate the way the market's moving and overall how to trade those levels. You go to the daily and you understand exactly where they come from. The 18.95 level comes back down from here, March highs, where you got rejected. You pushed down, you eventually mounted. It went back into local highs of 21K. Now we're back at that point here. So you can also see that 19.4 level, kind of that flat top before you end up breaking out again there. So you go to the two hour here and you can see how we're reacting. Saw a strong side of buyers from there. And I was really looking optimistic on the day to start the day specifically. That's what you wanted to see. Buyers trying to step in on NASDAQ there, but again, you reject and push back down. Then you get a better view of what's happening here with volume. And you can see that volume was moving on both sides. It wasn't just a one direction type of day, right? So what do I mean by that? When we look at this action, you can see buyers stepped in very aggressively in the, in the beginning of the day, not just that first market open, but also that second hour of trading, which is really big to see. But then it's obviously tends to slow down throughout the day and it picks right back up here at market close. So again, very interesting to see how the market moved and ultimately sellers stepping back in, which we haven't really seen a lot of that over the past few months of both sides of the market bringing in the big volume. And so that was a little bit of a change. The other thing here too is VIX, okay? VIX pushed into around $19, $20, 200 SMA right, right up here. And again, you rejected, pulled back, market. And again, these were signs you usually look for when maybe some topping, topping out is happening, right? Or bottoming out, right? And so when this happened again, VIX popped back up. So VIX is still a giant worrisome sign here because I don't think VIX is going to go like to $50. That's not what I'm saying is going to happen. But what you should understand is that typically when you're going to get that downside is when VIX is higher, okay? The more there's more volatility, more downside risk overall. But I don't think that this time, you know, we're going to sit with VIX at highs for, you know, a week, three weeks. That's probably not going to happen. So understand what's happening there. Now, going into tomorrow and next week, okay, a few things we need to talk about. Number one, okay, really quick, if you don't follow Earning Whispers on Twitter, I recommend doing so as well as myself so you can get all my updates. My link is down below. Um, but really quickly going into Earning Whispers, okay, so we have this week right here, but I'm going to be going over more in depth for next week. So we have names like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, all reporting next week. Um, meta. So those are going to be big names and probably the biggest mover across the market will happen next week. But on top of that as well, you also are going to have the biggest data pool coming in tomorrow as well. You know, we go over to the news, we go over our calendar right here, we go to North America and we'll schedule just for tomorrow right here, the 26th. Let's go for tomorrow. You have PCE prices coming out bright and early an hour before market open. And we know Powell has said plenty of times in the Fed that PCE is the best measure of inflation. PCE has obviously been tracking to the downside, if not flat. The last time we had PCE drop, the market had a big rally back in you know the end of June, early July. So things to consider. And that's what's really led us to having this viewpoint that a rate cut is coming sooner rather than later, right? So we go into something like yields and you can see what's happening here. Although, you know, yields have been popping up over the past two, three days, you know, yields again, chopping back to the downside. DXY, the dollar value as well, trending back to the downside right now, but still at the 200 SMA trying to break back up. So again, very critical time where we're at. And I don't think it's a coincidence that DXY is at a breakout point before PCE. Now going into PCE, I want to say this right now. Um, just going forward. I think PC is, again, the most important thing we should always be watching, okay? I'm going to say that right now. I'm trying to find PC on investing.com, right? And really, it's this simple to look up all this. People always ask me questions about this. I'm like, guys, you literally can just click this and Google it. Um, it literally takes five seconds to do any of this as you're seeing me do it in real time. So again, um, you scroll down, you can see, but PC has been on the downturn since, you know, basically the beginning of 2023, early or late 2022. And those are things that you're looking for to see. But again, I want to say broad markets here. I've been saying this. You don't want to start jumping the gun and going long before I go into anything else, right? You don't want to start jumping the gun going long until you get some confirmation or a reason to start going long. Now, if you're buying stock or leaps, then I, I, love, I love the viewpoint there, okay? I don't think you have to respect a day trader's point of view. But when I'm looking at this chart right now, Again, you guys always say, Tyler, you're very bullish. You're very this, you're very that. Well, again, guys, when you start breaking key levels, I quickly turn less bullish. Like when we broke below 19.7, we said you would get instant selling. And that was your worst day that you've had in over two years of trading, basically. So things to be looking for. 
and to understand what I'm looking for as well in the market. Because again, once you broke that key level of 19.7, you literally dropped, you know, 800 points in a matter of 24 hours. So worth mentioning, worth watching. So again, we're now, now at another major level. And again, I think this will probably be the, the line in the sand. And if you're going to get a bounce, I think it has to happen right here. Um, otherwise, you probably have more downside into 18,000. Um, that's a broad and bold statement from me, um, but I will stand by it. If you do not bounce here at 19K, 1895, I do believe your next target is going to be closer towards 18,000 near the 200 daily moving average. I can tell you that right now. You'll have some hiccups along the road, but I do think you'll come down into that range. So, really quick, let me draw it up for you. You either bounce here, find buyers, or you dip slowly and back into 18K. Very simple, don't overcomplicate it. That is what I'm looking for. ES, SPY, et cetera. SPY, you're at your key level as well. You try to hold the 5450, you bounce and came back down. You can also see this is kind of like a little zone here as well from basically there to there. Um, so again, that's where you're at right now. Very similar chart to the NASDAQ, what's happening there. Um, the Dow did have a good bounce in the beginning of the day and kind of had a decent day compared to you know everything else. Um, but again, you come back into your 40,700 40, level, the same level we mentioned yesterday. And again, you're going to notice something if you're new to this channel is everything is consistent. We don't just make new levels. All of our stuff stays there. Um, and again, that's why I always recommend following on Twitter so you can get these updates. If I have to make a quick change or anything like that, it's all there on Twitter as well. Link down below. But again, rejecting there. So everything here so far, very consistent. Um, the only thing that's interesting too is the Russell, which is holding up very well, the best looking um, index of all. Um, you're still seeing buyers settle in here. And I don't think you'll see the Russell dip unless PCE comes out bad, meaning higher than expected inflation on the report. So what you should be looking for right now is PCE paying close attention to it. Um, if it comes out bad, the Russell will get slapped and that'll be pretty bad for the overall market to let you know. But if PCE comes out good, I think the Russell and mid caps, small caps, are the long opportunity. Um, and then maybe you flow back into larger caps once they start getting a, you know, a certified bounce, if you will. Um, SPY QQQ really quickly. Um, SPY coming back down for that gap fill. We talked about this as well. Target number one was 540. After that, 537. The gap fill there got very close to on to the day. After that, it's going to get pretty ugly. Um, again, uh, QQQ 460 got underneath that. Now you're dropping down lower. Next target for me is down here near 450, 449 for myself personally. You have a few little areas in here as well. But I will say, I don't even need to look, but we can look if you want to, um, that you're going to have some choppy area here, basically between 456 and 450. So I don't think you're just going to fall through that level. Um, I think there's going to be the like chop around that area as well. So a lot of that clean downside movement has already happened, but we'll see. Uh, PC can bring in a lot of volatility as well. So things to be looking for right now. Okay. Now going a little bit further into the market and what I'm looking at overall, um, I do want to give a special shout out. You guys saw me using Moomoo Moo over here where I use them for options. I'm going to be going over options as well in the day. Um, and again, if you guys are interested in trading or anything along those lines, the link is down below for Moomoo. Moo. They are the sponsor of this channel. Um, and they really enable us to give a lot of you guys free information and not have to charge for a lot of stuff. So we do really shout them out and appreciate everything that they're doing. And I want to let you know right now, they are releasing cash accounts tomorrow on their platform. So if you were unable to use a cash account, that will officially drop tomorrow. Make sure you check it out. Um, again, love them. But yeah, so we're going to go back into options here as well. Um, and where we're going to spend most of our time here on the option chain is going to be on some of these semiconductor names because semiconductors have been weak. Um, and this has been the, the names that I've been calling out um, overall, number one has been AMD, the weakest of all. You got underneath 141, you started dropping back down. My next level down here is 133, 134. You go to the daily, you can see basically right here. Um, this 133, 134 range is where you're going to come down to next. Um, I would anticipate buyers try to hold you up there, but if you lose that level, it's going to be volatile and it's going to be weak down to 120, 125. Um, so again, a lot of pain coming in here. The one thing about AMD um, is it's not a longer term, it is a longer term play, but it's not as strong as a name like NVIDIA because AMD isn't like smashing earnings. Their earnings are staying around $6 billion, $5.5 billion, right? Very consistent, nothing really changing. NVIDIA is growing 30, 20% quarter over quarter. AMD is not. So that's the problem right now with AMD and then overall just getting destroyed right here. It was a great looking name, but that quickly changed overall. Um, AMD contracts, um, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of trading the, the next week out on these. The weeklies have been moving fantastic for downside trading. Um, but again, going for next week, I still think they move decent. You're still able to make quite a bit of money. You can see 73% on the day. Um, but again, 
what I'd be looking for further out of the money, like the 135s personally, taking my money and running no as you make it, okay? Because again, you're getting close to that support down there. Those could get in the money and those could make you a lot. So I'm watching AMD closely for the day trade of the downside. Now, the number one trade I was looking for today was actually Tesla for downside, but you just never got it. I traded it to the upside for a little bit back into 226. We never got the mount. If you had mounted 226, you would have ran to 230, 231 quick, um, but you rejected, as you can see, one, two, three, four, enough times there. Um, and now you're breaking back down. Now, I'm going to tell you, you can't go short on Tesla until you break below 215. You break below this low 214.7, 215, um, and I think you're going down to the 200 SMA. Until then, can't do nothing. But if you do break down, give you the trade. What are you looking for? Um, they're a little bit pricey Tesla contracts, but I still like them. Big fan. Um, I'm going to let you know right now. So if I'm going for next week, I'm going probably like four. $4 out of the money, $5 out of the money, like 215s, 220s. Again, they move good, so do what you want with that as well. But again, like Tesla, good mover, um, but you need to break below that level and it'll move quick. Um, interesting thing, news on the day is Microsoft, to let you know, is uh, releasing their new competitor to Google, uh, OpenAI Search. AI Search, yeah, this is what it's called. Uh, so Search GPT will be coming out. It's gonna be like a new search engine to rival Google. Um, it's not directly with Microsoft, but Microsoft does have a big stake in OpenAI, so worth mentioning. Um, but oddly enough, Microsoft kind of got hit today. You bounced and then back to the downside. Um, I think Microsoft is getting hit, but I think longer term, I think Microsoft has upside potential. Um, and you're going to notice something too with, the, with these charts, right? As they go to the higher time frames, is you know these 200 MAs are they're they're looking more and more like a reality potentially, right? Like they're coming they're coming closer and closer and closer. So I do like this. I think the, the the potential is there for some of these. If they come back down, again, that's $20 of downside, 5% roughly. Um, but again, you know, I'm gonna tell you right now, these are names you need to keep on your list because they have potential. Um, again, that'd be a longer data contract, so I'm not gonna cover it on um, the option chain, but yeah, would be looking at that one as well. Um, going into something like Amazon, this is concerning. Now, you ended up kind of holding that level in your 180, but you had some nasty wick down here, okay? So if you get and hold below 180, this thing could start dropping quick. Um, I'm gonna let you know right now. I think their earnings are gonna be good, but like technically speaking, they don't look good. Take it for what it is. Apple, um, you wanted to see a remount of 220 before you could ever go long here. Um, and spoiler alert, this is why we have our key levels. You have a one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hours of rejecting at 220 and then dropping back to the downside. That's why we want for the break and the retest, not the break, because the break doesn't tell you nothing. The retest tells you everything. So again, what I'm watching for here, coming back down, we need to see upside there before I want to go long. I'm not going short on Apple here, by the way, not for me. Um, I've been very clear too, if the market starts to dip, what you would like to be trading is something like Exxon to the upside. It's the best hedge right now. Um, Exxon has been a booming and a zooming, um, but uh, take that for what it is. Been a good mover. Definitely keep it on the top of your watch list as well. Um, Netflix, Chop Fest, can't really do nothing there. Meta has been a good downside name as well. I mentioned this one in yesterday's video. You need a breaking between below the lows from um, the 17th. You broke below those. You dropped it down to the pit of hell to 443. You bounce back up. You're kind of in this range now. You get back below 453 and you're looking for downside. Under 453, you have some chop down here, guys, but it's not pretty. It's not pretty. 430 is what you'd be looking for. Um, Meta does have earnings next week, so, you know, options aren't going to be cheap spoiler alert um but yeah so options are very expensive tough to trade right now especially unless you want to trade weeklies but do what you want to do okay um again trying to just make it the rundown here um smci okay jay jordan my partner in crime not my wife though not my wife uh jordan has been talking a lot about smci in discord so this is your level you're watching around like 670 roughly if smci breaks below and this is probably my top watch going into PCE tomorrow because if PCE comes out higher than expected, then we have to expect um, that obviously IWM drops. If if this drops, ladies and gentlemen, you get below the 200 SMA, 650, you are, it's going to be bad. Bad news bears, rip the bandaid off, shoot me in the leg, call it a pebble. Um, that is not going to feel good. So again, that's what you're looking for, the break of 670, 650. Um, SMCI could be a major, major, major loser. Um, if PCE goes bad, especially, but you're also seeing semiconductors getting hit, which is definitely causing some more pain as well. Um, and you're seeing semiconductors get below 239 at 240, which also is no buenos, no nachos. No buenos, no nachos. So that's what we're looking for there as well. Okay. Um, CrowdTrack mentioned this one yesterday. I said short term, I didn't like it. 
I didn't like it. Not a lot. Didn't like it a little. Um, you started breaking down below that, that level there as well, 259. You retested it a handful of times and you dropped back down. Um, I am looking. Who's that? Uh, I'm looking for this to come down to 242, 244. Um, personally, CrowdStrike looks weak. I also think long dated. I, I said this too. Long term, I like CrowdStrike. Like long term, I'm buying them. I'm, 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 but I'm hiding them. I'm buying them and I'm hiding them. I'm putting them in my closet. I don't want no one to know that I own them because they might laugh at me. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it out next Thanksgiving when everyone's going to be like, hey, who got into CrowdStrike? And I'm like, yeah, dare I say? That's going to be me. You know what I mean? So take that for what it is. So what I'm looking at right now, broad markets, favorite stocks, et cetera. Um, I'll have some more charts posted. I'll probably do a little. And you know what? Right now, if you're a lucky duck, you can go uh, comment on this. So yeah, doing chart requests right now. Go comment. Let me know. Um, if I like your chart or if I like your stock, if you t tell me to, Hey, Tyler, look at Nokia, I'm probably not going to go over it. So use some logic, best request to get answered. Um, we'll be doing those here in a second, guys. I appreciate all the support. I appreciate all the, the love on the channel. You guys have been like liking the content a lot more lately. I appreciate it. We also will be opening up more discord spots come at the end of the month, the first of the month. Sorry. Um, so make sure you're checking that out. The newsletter is always available as well on the website. All those links are down below. Um, if you're following on Twitter, you'll get more updates and notifications for when those spots open up. But I appreciate you guys. You guys have been awesome subscribers. I appreciate everything that you guys um, have been supporting me with. And, you know, when I had some downtime last week, you guys stepped up. You, you know, said some kind stuff. So I do appreciate that. I definitely felt the love. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one, traders.